Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where we talk all things Commander. And this week, we are wrapping up the year 2023. Did you know that's 23 years after Y2K? (laughs) That's a quarter of a century, guys. Yes. Uh, Do you remember Y2K? (laughs) Where were you on Y2K? Y2K. Uh, Yeah. Uh, Were you born after Y2K? You're like, what are these people even talking about? What is (laughs) Y2K? Yeah, I guess there is also that. What is that? So we're going to go over some of the best cards released in 2023. So if if uh, you've saved all your shopping, this is the time to uh, to to get all the good cards for 2023. Uh, join with me today is Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Excited to talk some magic. All right. Uh, budget Commander Tomer, what's up? I'm excited. Most of these cards are not budget, but I'm still excited. Krim, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Asian Avenger. Uh, how's it going? It goes well. Uh I started making homebrewed cold brew, so I'm just very Ooh, good for you. How how West Coast of you? Yeah, uh, and uh, I am the Codfather <laughs> Richard, and today we'll talk about the best Commander cards released in 2023. Uh, but before we do that. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Card Conduit. Uh, they're the easiest way to sell your magic cards. Card Conduit lets you skip all the typing, time, and work associated with buy listing. Their curated service lets you send in as many cards as you want with buy list value of $1 more, and you pay just a 5% service fee. You can also use their sorted service where you list and sort your cards and pay only 2%. You get a detailed report and fast payment once your order is processed. You can get 10% off by heading over to cardconduit.com slash Goldfish. So thank you, Card Conduit. And uh, we have another sponsor. It's ourselves. Uh, MTGGoldfishMerch.com. Uh, we have some new tokens. We have some signed tokens by all of us, Phil included. And we have play mats. So head over to MTGGoldfishMerch.com. And a Patreon. Okay, we're just going to keep reading ads. Yeah. Oh, no my God. Today. Yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so we are, so roughly, we all chose three cards. There's 12 cards. You know, we call it top 10. And we're going to order them from... Uh, Least best to best. So worst to best, but the, the worst cards here are very good. So the good cards will be at the end and rough order. Uh, I'm going to kick things off with Moonshaker Cavalry. Uh, eight mana, white mm-hmm. card, triple white, six, six, <laughs> spirit knight flying. Uh, when it enters a battlefield, creatures you control gain flying and plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is a number of creatures you control. Uh, it's basically white crater hoof behemoth. And if you actually look at white finishers, there aren't many. Uh, so Moonshaker Cavalry is much needed. Like the the best ones would be like something like a Chroma's Will. Uh, but that relies on your creatures being big enough to begin with because, you know, giving double strike and plus, you know, double strike and flying to one ones is like kind of useless. Uh, there's a changeling that can give everything plus X plus X. And then there's stuff like Cathar's Crusade, which no one really wants to track counters of in, in tabletop. So Moonshaker Cavalry, I think, can find its way into all weenie decks, all white decks can use it. As long as you're going wide, uh, token decks, a staple in white, I think it's actually one of the best cards. Flying, maybe even better than Trample, uh, because you get to just ignore everyone's toughness. Uh, I played in, in Baragon. I've been very impressed by it. Uh, I think this is one of the best cards. Uh, its price is, is pretty up there, so people seem to be picking this up too. So Wait, what I, is that now? It's $14. <laughs> Woo! Sheesh, as the kids would say. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's hard to find a mono-white finisher, right? Like Coat of yeah, Arms yeah, is yeah. another option you can get. Uh, but if you're playing all weenies, which you will be because you're playing white, it, it's hard to finish the game with a, with the overrun effect. So Moonshaker Cavalry is much needed. Yeah. I mean, definitely one of the best white finishers for sure. Like it, it's Crater Hoof, but in white. So, yeah, it's a good one. That's So, so I, I was going to ask you about that. Like, does that live up to that name, that title? It's just White Crater Hoof? I personally don't think I, so. I, don't I, think, think so. I don't think it is. Right? I think Crater Hoof, the fact that it has haste and that yes. oh, green, it's a creature and green just has better ways of tutoring it up. But like if yeah. you don't have green and you need or you need a secondary Crater Hoof, it's very good. Like if you're not if you're go wide token deck and you don't have access to green. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you want a creature finisher. Yeah. 
Definitely. But White's even like better at going wide, right? So there's some upside there, I would say, with uh with Moonshaker That's Calvary. True. Like White's White's really good at flooding the board. So yeah, I would say I guess in a vacuum, it's not quite as good as Crater Hoof, but in the context of White being really good at flooding the board, it's still a, a very close, I would say, as far as in terms of like if you cast this with a big board, you probably kill someone or maybe close out the game, right? Like so I think that's where the comparison kind of holds, like even if it's not quite as strong in a vacuum. Yeah, well, so one to one like, hoof is better, but compared to the other option in, in in its color, like cavalry is much better, right? Because green has like literal overrun, like every Kamal or whatever is an overrun. It has triumph of the hordes. There's like all of these pump effects, and also when you start going multicolor, like the ultimatum, some of them pump as well. Whereas yeah, white kind of yeah. has nothing really. Like you're like. I don't know. Uh, the, the thing that gives your creatures plus two, plus two, like the enchantment, God. I don't even know what it's called because we don't play it. Uh, like the, the anthem effects like Heliod, like they're kind of they're kind of sucky. Uh, so compared to what's available in its color, I think this is like way better. But head to head, Crater Hoof number one, Moonshaker yeah. number two. I mean, yeah, like I, I definitely think this is the, the card is good. I play it in my like Bernard deck and it's nice. It's just that. Sometimes, because, like, it just gives flying. Yeah, if it you're playing against an angel deck, then you're a little sad face. <laughs> I, uh, surprisingly <laughs> it enough, <doesn't> help. <laughs> I got got by a spirits deck because they were able to block. <laughs> yeah. So, like, that is unfortunate. Yeah, I mean, that's like trying to overrun past a, a toughness matter stack or something, mm -hmm. right? You're like, hmm, actually, <laughs> they're, they're somehow blocking this. Those decks don't exist. Uh, Krim, hit yeah. us up with All a right. card from 2023. So, from... It came out this year, right? I, I, yes. I yes. Don't... You're right. <laughs> yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah, got it. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> we verified this. Okay. I, it's been a long I don't year. know. Right. We've been, I'm not, let's not lie here. You know, you're all guilty of it. A lot There's of been 30 sets this year or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For, for the viewers, I'm going, I'm going remastered. With... Phyrexia All Will Be One, March of the Machines, Lord of the Rings, Commander Masters, Wilds of Eldraine, Doctor Who, <laughs> Ixalan. Plus, like, their associated commander products and special <laughs> things, Rex, stuff like that, right? So Did you that get that off the top? That is very impressive. No, no I wrote it. It's on the sheet. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. We wouldn't okay. look dumb and choose oh. cards released oh, yeah, in 2016. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. In that case, I go with Fairy Mastermind. Yuta Takahashi himself. Uh, like, I, I love this card. For those that don't know, it's one in a blue. It's a, a, a fairy. So, naturally, it's a rogue. Even better. Uh, and then it's a 2-1 flash flying, and you pay three and a blue. Everybody can draw an additional card. And whenever, an, and just passively, whenever an opponent draws a card past their first one for each turn, you also draw a card. And it only triggers once each turn. This is just a very solid blue card. I think this is just something, it's cheap. The mana investment is so low. It's flash, so you get to apply, you get maximum information before you deploy it. This is a card that I've just played in a deck that has blue. I've never found it to be bad. And obviously, I've I've also had the best of times with it with like Orcish Bowmasters, uh, you know, forcing everyone to draw. And uh, so, yeah, like this, this card, it just does so much for only two mana. And I think that if I were to just show somebody like a, a, a deck and commander with blue, just generically speaking, I would include this. A lot of Tomers and, and Seths exist, Phils, who just excessively draw, right? right. Like, so it's nice to, it's nice <laughs> wow. to get in Call there, that. you know? Or, 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 or how about this? How about no such thing. the Saffron Olives who still believe in Phyrexian Arena? <laughs> they lose the life. You draw the card. It's great. I mean, you they also draw a we card, but get you draw, get one, yeah. too. Yeah, everybody gets one, you know? That's great. Or maybe maybe Richard doesn't want to invite me to a secret rendezvous. That's fine. I'll invite myself. I'll have one <laughs> card, please. Thank you. Actually, I would have two cards. You get cards. two cards off the rendezvous. Yeah, oh, my <laughs> God. Look and that, that, that that'll make me feel bad and just target you anyway, so then you get two cards. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think this card might even be a little underrated still. I was looking like at the decks playing it and it's a lot of like, oh, I put it in fairies or my deck that's like themed around flyers like Arata and Giada or whatever. But like, I think Krim's right that this is just like a generically strong card. Like it's a, a decent body and has flash and the card advantage it can generate is really impressive. Like even like its ability, it looks a little bit janky to like pay four to have each player draw a card. But when you consider that that's making someone else draw their second card, if you get the timing right and you're getting the extra card from that, it's actually like kind of an effective way to generate card advantage in a pinch. So yeah, I like this card a lot too. 
I like it. It's it's quite good. Uh, I do think most blue decks would just jam it and be happy to add it there. Uh, I have it. I have it in my Zedru deck because my deck has a lot of ways of making everybody draw extra cards, like one extra card per turn, like Howling Mine effects and stuff. And then Fairy of Mass Mill, like a Howling Mine or something on the battlefield. Yeah, you draw an extra card, and I'm drawing an extra card every single person's turn. It's really fun. Like uh, Council of the Four too does that. Um, yeah, yep. I, I, I'm a big fan of this card. I like it, and it holds swords and stuff very well. Like sort of body in mind. I, I mean, good sword. I, it holds good sword. Correct, not that sword. Correct. <laughs> yeah, good sword. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's okay. I, I meant like sort of called okay. <laughs> Sure. It, it, it's a it's a synergy piece for me. So I would put it in decks where it synergizes. But it like what slot do you put it in? Do you put it in as your two mana card draw? Do you count it as like a, a late game card draw? Because I feel like on the lower curve, this doesn't smooth my land drops. And then the higher curve, like I might as well just play Consecrated Sphinx and call it a day. No. So I it, like I, I have to specifically have synergies. Like if you're playing Hal, I don't know about yeah, that. Yeah, this is crazy, right? Or like if you are fairies or rogues, this is like pretty good, right? But just generically, I'm like, I don't know. I'm not. Wait, 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 wait. You would rather sink six mana into a, like, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this isn't questioning the validity of like, you know, Sphinx. It's just, this is, this is two mana. Flash. Yeah, but like, what, that's want. what I'm asking. Like, what, where do you slot it in your deck? Like, what are you taking out to put it? Are you replacing the big card draw, the small card draw, a creature? Like, I, I don't know. Like, what, like, where does it even go? That's where I have trouble figuring out how to place it in my decks. Take out an island. No, no, don't. Don't. Please, just <laughs> People will take that seriously. No, don't. <laughs> PSA, I don't, don't land anything don't with that. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe. <laughs> All right, Seth, hit us up with the card. Hit us up with All the All right, we're, we're going back to the very beginning of the year. The first, I believe, big set of the year for a card that... Boy, it has been very hyped, and I think it's mostly stood up to uh, that hype, and that's Elish Norn, Mother of the Machine. So 5 mana, 4, 7 with Vigilance. It's a legendary Phyrexian Praetor. Uh, it's basically a Panharmonicon. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes a trigger to build a permanent you control the trigger, it triggers a second time. More importantly, it also stops your opponent's triggers from triggering. Permanents ET being under your opponent's control don't cause things to trigger. And this card, I think, is... So everyone associates me with Panharmonicons, and this is a Panharmonicon, but he also is a very scary, effective hate card. There's a lot of things in Commander that people play that just happen to be triggering, drawing cards, enter the battlefield triggers. That's like 2023 magic. Think of like most of the strongest cards or have some sort of Atraxas, Atalis, all these things, ET being triggering. Elish Norn just sits out and shuts them down. And it's not just creatures, it shuts down enchantments, Oblivion Rings, uh, Leyline Bindings entering the battlefield. So I think if anything, the card, it's one of the most popular commanders of the year, uh, and it sees a lot of play. If anything, it's almost too strong for its own good because it does put a really big target on your back because it makes people very salty when their cards stop working. So if anything, I think it's it's almost too strong for its own good. But uh, but yeah, Elishorn, I think, is pretty easily one of the best commander cards of the year. I I like this card a lot, um, but... I <laughs> I still think about how at the beginning of the year we, everyone was like screaming this needed to be banned. Do you think it needs to be banned still? <laughs> it oh it doesn't need to be banned, but it does like uh, I mean I never was thought it, it a mistake to, be banned, to make. But, but, yeah. No, it's not a no. It wasn't a mistake to make, but. I definitely have had games where, like, I'm, I'm trying to do my, like, fun, like, value things in a game of Commander at, like, a Magic Con, and someone just drops their Elish Norn, and it's very deflating. It is to, like, oh, my God, like, my whole deck doesn't work now, and most of my removal is ETB-based, too, so I'm never going to kill this thing. So then you're left just, like, begging the other players, like, please, please, someone, like, kill this Elish Norn so I can play Magic again. <laughs> so it is, like, a, it can be very obnoxious with just how, like, if you're playing a Blink deck or a Panharmonic on a Yarrick style deck, anything like that. Was a ravenous just... chupacabra. Yeah, yeah, you my know chupacabra what? does nothing. <laughs> you got me. You know what? As someone who's on the receiving end of a lot of like Bragos and Yarox and stuff, all I have to say is good. Not it. <laughs> you know, I'll Ouch. give it indestructible. I'll give it indestructible. Right. Trout. I mean, but someone's gonna have like this one card. They need to draw one card off of, and then yeah. they're gonna go out of their way to <laughs> unleash this. I, I mean, will say this card has been self, you know, has been I guess downgraded due to power creep. Yeah. So and. So this was released at the beginning of the year. We're like, oh, Panharmonicon. But 
Little did we know that Wizards would make Panharmonicon everything now. Yeah. Like, literally, there's yeah. a new Panharmonicon. Like Panharmonicon? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, similar, like, last year, like, everything was a Toski. Like, every yep. commander, like, would have a, some kind of Toski effect stapled onto it. Now, like, there's some kind of Panharmonicon for something. Oh, there's an Artifacts Panharmonicon. Or there's a Creature-type Panharmonicon. Yeah. So attack her I would say it's it's lost a bit of its luster, I think, since the beginning of the year, since we get so many of these cards now. But yeah, it's still it's still a five man of four seven giant praetor that that does things. And yeah. and remember too, like the the hating on your opponent stuff is the unique part, I think, compared to other panharmonicons. Like there's a lot of panharmonicons now, but most of them are not also like torpor orbs for your opponents or whatever, like the one sided stack piece. Yeah, I like it. It's good. I would jam it in. Uh, my blink decks because or panamonicon decks or whatever uh it doesn't have ward or anything so i think it's very fair and it just dies when it's annoying but no i like it also speaking think, of ward, it's time for a panamonicon tier list there's like too many of these <laughs> i know like, which ones <laughs> actually make the cut that would be a two-parter <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I, I, got a, <laughs> I got a ninja in also roaming throne really good i'm yeah. gonna also have it on the Ooh. list but it's like a little similar to elish norn so we're not just doing like the best panamonicons of the year but also shout out to roaming throne like oh god uh, if got you're... roaming throne oh i have the chain oh no <laughs> oh yeah okay well you know you're mentioning it now i would have put yeah. that definitely Oh, well, that's perfect timing right. because, Tomer, it's your turn. What, what, what okay. card would you have as one of the best of the year? <laughs> okay, so very quick honorable mention uh, to uh, Roaming Throne, I guess. I think it is, like, if you're in a if you're in a kindred type of whatever deck and you have triggered abilities, I mean, you will. You will have triggered abilities. Every single, like, you're a silver deck, you're a human deck, you're a zombie deck, whatever. War Roaming Throne is my pick. Um, it's four mana. It has War 2. It's colorless. It fits in every deck. When it enters the battlefield, it, it enters as a chosen creature type. So if you're in a zombie deck, it's going to count as a zombie for zombie synergies. And then whenever a triggered ability of a creature that you chose triggers, you double it. So it's uh, a Painter Monocon for or Strionic Resonator uh, repeatable for all your creatures if you're in like a zombie deck or whatever, any type of creature deck. It's stupidly uh good um basically it's they took um a two mana version of this harmonic prodigy which is just a two mana red uh, it works for wizards and and shamans and they were like at four mana we'll give it a word two and now it works for everybody and it's colorless it's just very good it's it's stupidly it's good it's so are, are you so ridiculous. do you believe you're, are you in the camp of if you have a commander you put it in the deck? <laughs> so it depends what? on the commander. I <laughs> like, think it depends like, on the commander. If the commander it goes has in every a, deck is what you're saying. I yeah. don't think yeah, so. Like, if you have a commander that with a triggered ability. Deck. If you have a yeah. commander with a triggered ability then I think like I don't know. I I jam in like Atroxa, even if I don't have creature type synergies, because Atroxa triggers every turn. Like uh, I, know I, I proved do. that in our last Commander Clash. Y'all know. Y'all know. It was very awkward. Yeah, I, I think that's I think that's too greedy. I think that's like a little bit too win more. Um, if it okay. just works okay. on your commander, but if your commander like literally like if it's triggered ability is like so nonsense that uh, you just like win the game off it, then yeah, sure. Not Atraxa, but like Mirim, for example, like. A mirror, well, Miram is dragon, so I guess no. But like Jaleva, I have Jaleva Nefalia Scourge. When she attacks, you get to cast a spell for free, basically, and this lets you cast two spells for free. I ran Harmonic Prodigy in that, and I, I would run Roaming Throne in that too. This card I mean, is better than Alish Norn, right? It, it's four That's mana, insane. it's colorless. It's Ward 2. It protects something. It's yeah. more situational because you choose a creature type, but it doesn't come with the stacks effect that makes you arch enemy immediately for no reason. So people are like, yeah, that value. I can get you, you know, I can let you get away with that value, but you shutting down like any of my ETBs, like that's a no-go. <laughs> so I think it's less assuming and more likely to stick. Plus it has Ward 2. Important because if you're playing like Beast with it, that's like five mana to get yeah. rid of this, right? That's a heavy investment. So people might actually leave it alone with the war too. Does that make swords yeah. better than Richard? Because swords is only yeah, one yeah, mana, so it would only be three mana. Be, oh, you know what? Two. Our revelation still cleans us up for three mana. <laughs> 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 sure. So don't care. <laughs> don't care. <laughs> but this card is like, a, I think it's staple for any like creature type deck. Like if you care about that and some commanders, I guess. Well, creature types that trigger. 
Like, yeah. It's like all of that. It's, yeah, oh, it's very oh, hard oh, to There find. are a lot of Name types one. that don't what's, do what's anything. A, what's a creature type that doesn't have some sort of triggered ability that's like it's based around? There's Bert, very probably. <laughs> maybe okay, they're, maybe they're the creature, creature type. Your commander is no. the Revy. Okay. You get to like, untap twice the skeletons. I can like, like, like zombie, again. Do zombies trigger yes. normally? Wilhelm. Yeah, yeah, yeah all the time. time. Yeah. It works with like, like mm. Ven- Vengeful so Dead good. is a trigger. Yeah, and Murphy will trigger to school. Mm. Yeah, Murph will have many triggers. Murph love it. They can like like regery taps like what? Yeah, I guess See, that's there's, true. Like there's so many right. things in in like commander specifically. If you just have a kindred deck, this goes in it. It's I, one of those. But there's like that... okay, okay. But like let's say throw the kindred type away, right? Just throw that away, and we're not playing a full on all Merfolk deck or anything. Let's just say my commander is like Shealdred or I don't know anything or 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 Atroxa. That alone is enough for some people. Uh, like, I, I've been reading online where people think just as long as there's something to benefit off of a trigger. That, that, that's four mana play. to copy that trigger. Like, is that worth it, right? You gotta think, like, how much value is that trigger bringing? And usually, if there's enough value to make four mana, your commander's, like, outrageously expensive. Like, big Atraxa. We also saw it, we also saw it in the last game where we where Seth put a roaming throne in our Atraxa, and it was like, no, I wish it was not there. <laughs> In my defense, sure these, we each build come twelve right order. <laughs> yeah, we all we all screwed confused. up. We all screwed up on that. That because <laughs> because be the thing is, everybody thinks that. Th- so like, there's like arcane signet, right? Yeah. And this is kind of like this auto include, pretty much. That so, if you because it goes in any no, colors, it's, it's, it's four mana. So you got to count sure. that four mana to what you're copying, and you need to make sure it's four mana and a combo, right? So you got to make sure it's worth the payoff. So. But if it's every only commander? your commander, that seems a little sketch to me. <laughs> so I mean, yeah, like it's it's not gonna go in some bad commander that has no trigger whatsoever. Well, but I mean, you know, the commander triggers, <laughs> right? But it, it doesn't literally go in every single deck. But it, it's one of those cards that if you throw it in a deck, you will play the deck and be like, oh wow, I can't believe Roaming Throne with it works with this. Oh wow, I didn't realize it works with it. Like it works with way more than you realize. There's like so many I mean, things. You guys are calling it S tier, right? It's S tier. It goes in every deck, basically. <sighs> A minus like a a. small percentage edge <laughs> cases, right? It goes in a lot of decks. You gotta have a bunch of creatures of the same type, but ideally, but like yeah, it's it's very close to S tier. No. All right. I, I, I will <laughs> give you guys an S tier card for me. All decks, five C included. <laughs> Lorian revealed. Five mana sorcery. Blue. Double blue, by the way. So so three generic, two blue. So draw three cards. Island Cycling 1. This is one of the best cards of the year, hands down, because it's a five-mana draw three, right? Or it could be a tapped land. And I call it that because you pay one mana, you cycle it for a land, and you play that land. Uh, if, an untapped land, right? If you play a, a tapped land, that'd be like two mana. But you can get Mystic Sanctuary <laughs> with this, right? Which lets you oh my God. <laughs> get another card, right? You can oh you can get God. a triome with this. This color fixes, yeah. right? Or you can just get a basic land. Uh, it's, so sweet. It's like Seagate so Restorations, sweaty. right? It's, it's just one of these cards you just like slam in there and then you're happy to pay five mana draw three and then you can cycle it, get a Mystic Sanctuary, you can cycle it. I don't know if there's any other island utility lands, uh, but triomes, you guys it's, are saying nothing. It's, no, I okay. Oh, so I mean, I, I, it's like a solid MDFC. I like this card. To me, it doesn't really scream like, huh, I don't know. When I think cards of the year, I'm thinking of these like big splashy effects. This is just like a really solid staple. You can put it in every deck and get value out of it. Like the MDFCs, and I love my MDFCs. So I like the card a lot. I don't know if I would consider it to be like card of the year just because it's like it's not flashy enough uh, for me. It's not flashy enough. How do you how do I you see, know put this as one of the cards of the year how without are you the flash? I can, I can tell you have I can no tell, lands or cards in hand. <laughs> I could tell Seth is not cut from a control player's cloth, you know, because like control like control players are like, yo, you see think twice? Oh my god, it has flashback. <laughs> oh <laughs> card of the year. But this doesn't that's, have that's that, that this doesn't have instant speed though. Yeah, yeah. See, That's like, but it does have instant speed because it cycles. So I actually think this card is amazing. I, I, I poo-pooed it at the beginning. I thought it was a meme just because Richard is like, it's like an MDFC, <laughs> but it really is like an MDFC, <laughs> and it's really good in sixty card formats. Uh, in hundred card formats, it's okay. It's still pretty good. It's still pretty darn good. I guess it's still a draw three. It's it. It really isn't flashy, but it is a very good card. So. I, I, you know, again, I, I, I'm cut from the control player's jib, so 
Yes, Richard, that is very nice. That is a very Don't, good don't card all system. blue decks start with Seagate Restoration and Lorien Revealed? Yeah. No. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? I mean, Why I wouldn't know. Yeah. Like, isn't, no, isn't like that? You're like, like okay. no? Like, do you like, ever question cut it? Is, the question is, do you cut a land when you include this? Does this take a land spot? It depends how many MDFCs I have. <laughs> <laughs> how many lands have I started cutting? Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. So 30 lanes left. Line. He's like, I got these nine MDFCs. How, how does it compare to... It's a to tap s- land, right? Tap. How does you it can't get- count it as like a full land. How does it compare to Seagate? Do you think it's as good as Seagate Restoration? Because Seagate Restoration, I do put in literally every deck. You think it's better than Seagate Restoration? Ooh. More castable. Seagate Restoration is a little win more, but you can get the Mystic Sanctuary combo, which puts it over the top. And it, it color fixes. Seagate Restoration only gives you blue. Yep. This will get you a Triome if you want. But so, it comes into play untapped. It can. Seagate Restoration. Yes. Yes. Hmm. yes. Okay, maybe they're... So, can- realistically, I put both, but I think it's actually better. If, I had, if you had to make me choose only one... Uh, but, you know, we all like that. I have eight cards in hand. I uh, Secret Restoration, <laughs> no maximum hand size. Thank yeah, you very much. Feels like, so good. You know, there, there's that pop-off play. But the five mana make my six land drop. Like, I think, you know, you don't remember that, but that's like kind of important. That's very I'm going to start to have, I'm going to have to start playing it more. I always play Seagate Restoration. This one I play sometimes, but I, I think I got to start thinking of them in the same way where I just always put them in every time. It's a three dollar common. That's how good it is. I th- it's also played in sixty card formats, by the way. <laughs> my my take on this is it is as good as Richard is saying. However, Richard always like he'll have like this five color pile, and then he'll throw in like Mystic Sanctuary in there, <laughs> and like yes, there's like two <laughs> other <laughs> islands in the entire deck. And I'm like, yeah, no, stop. It's like you know, <laughs> girls where it's like <laughs> stop trying to make fetch happen. It's like stop trying to make Mystic Sanctuary Lord reveal happen in every single deck version. Please, it's like it's like War Room. And you're like you play it as this terrible colorless land, and then once like every twenty games, you draw a card with it, and you're very pleased with it. Right? <laughs> you draw a card with it, you put a card on top. That's that's different. That's a tutor. That's better than that's, that's better than draw a card. Tutor. That's a tutor. That's a vampiric tutor right there. But I agree, Lorian <laughs> revealed by itself probably deserves a spot in basically every blue deck. Yeah, right? But the question is, do you cut a land? Would you? I know Tomer, Maybe. like, cut would half you? Cut land. <laughs> Maybe. It, like, is this, is this a land spot? That's the only thing that I'm curious about. Like, I love yeah. this card. It's, it's, I think, yeah. It can't be a full it, land spot, I don't think. It, like, I think it does depend on, like, how greedy you're being, but I think you're more in, like, the half a land range. Yeah, it's half a land, really, yeah. Okay. So if you're playing so like the, two the one of these, case where it wrecks you, it's like turn one Lorien revealed and you have no other lands. Like it's unplayable, yeah. right? So there are some weird cases where it's not actually an MDFC. Yeah. And there's some like tempo laws, right? You got to like pay one to cycle it. And then if you get a Triome, that's coming into play tap. So there are like some little like tempo y issues, but that's not a deal well, breaker. You get an island means. and then it's Seagate Restoration. Oh, no. It's a uh, not Seagate, like Jawari Disruption or something. Yeah, you get that sure. Better, right? Yeah. Best counter spell. Best counter That is. We, that <laughs> Trim, hit us with the card. Oh, well, okay, so there's, I think there's this card, um, it came out, I think this year, I think it's a little underrated, it might catch on in other formats, but I'm gonna try to break it, it's Shieldred the Apocalypse. Never heard of it. Um, brand new card, little, very low off the radar, uh, very good, two black, two in black, black, four, five, death touch, by the way, uh, whenever you draw a card, you gain two life, whenever your opponents draw a card, they lose two life, so... Uh, just a very solid body at, at aggressively costed. Did, did this come out this year? Wasn't that September of 2022? Is that 2022? Dominaria United. United. No, Dominaria United. Should be this year, no? I think it was the big fall set from last year. No, Dominaria Remastered, Remastered, Remastered. No, no, came no, Dominaria out this year. Remastered. Uh, uh, the next card is a brand new card that, that is also, I think... Kind of underrated, and we'll, I, I think we'll make it happen. I think I can break it this year. It's uh, Orcish Bowmasters. Uh, that's right. For those that don't know what Orcish Bowmaster is, one in a black, <laughs> uh, flash one one. And <laughs> I mean, does the typing, does, do you need the typing on it? It's a one one, and when it enters the battlefield, I get to deal one damage and then make a uh, one one, a mass, a one one army. And then whenever an opponent draws a card, uh, whenever an opponent draws a card except the first one they draw on each of their draw steps, Orcish Bowmasters deals one damage to any target, then a mass Orcs one. So, so yeah, like we get to just keep growing our army. I love Fairy Mastermind. I might have alluded to this because this is a good friend of Fairy Masterminds because now 
you really are good at punishing excessive draw. This actually punishes them in that, and I think it, personally, I I think Tomer is in agreement with this too. Uh, it's the kind of card punish where it actually just allows your opponent to still play the game, still do their card draw. They just get hurt a lot. And we like that. And, uh, we absolutely love that. The more that I can punish excessive drawing, which in the current year of cards, everything has like draw a card stapled to it. So this card gets better every year removed. You, I mean, I don't think people will be salty about this compared to like a Notion Thief because Notion Thief just doesn't let them draw at all. Uh, and and this is just such a cheap investment on mana. It's only two mana. It's, it's so friggin good this is such a powerful card it's dominated other 60 card formats i don't think there's anything i could tell you or say that we don't already know other than that yo goaded this card is amazing more bow masters more oppo agents in 2024 <laughs> no please no if anything orgish bow masters is like wow but i think it's like borderline too good honestly like i, I would have wait this you think this like is worse than notion thief I think or like a narcissist. It's not or... worse than Notion Thief, but I don't know if it's enough better than Notion Thief that I want them to just keep printing more of them every set or something. Like I, I still think it's like a r incredibly powerful effect. Like, because yeah, in the fair scenario, it's really good. Like if you like, oh my opponent's drawing too many cards, I flash this in, deal some damage. That's pretty good. But you also have the like. I play this and then I windfall and I just kill someone or something like you have a lot of those play patterns that come into it too. And those are the ones that like, that's where this card's busted, right? Like just windfall one player dies type of thing. So that's the part that makes it scary to me. Yeah. When, when it's like a windfall effect, it's just like absolutely broken. And like, I don't want any more of that, but like, I do like fair draw punish and I think they could just word it right. Like if an effect would cause an opponent to draw a card, like an effect you control or effect an opponent control would cause them yeah. to draw cards. Then it works. Like we've seen that yeah. with like Ashiok and Shuffling, for example. Yeah, uh, that's what so I would could like definitely to award see it in the future. And I do think this is like this would be my second highest pick for best card in Commander in this year. Uh, yeah. For a two drop, it's literally just like an Alpha Omega threat. Threat, you know, like it's, yeah, it's wild how much this this uh, threat level is for just two mana. It puts two bodies on the battlefield. And also, I've noticed it was used politically. Like, I was playing Vampires, Clavelenio, a couple mm -hmm. uh, weeks ago on Commander Clash. And Seth was, like, <laughs> just drawing cards. And Krim was like, yeah, if you draw cards, I'll kill all of Tober's stuff. And my stuff all died. So <laughs> uh, you can also use it even, even, like, to help the rest of the table, in a way. Help the rest of the people, I'd say loosely. But yeah. So it's you're saying it's a card. hero. Uh, I mean... No, I, I would disagree oh. there, but uh, it is oh. very good. It's very good. I'm agreeing really that like it's, this card. it's one of the best cards, oh, this cards in 2023. Really? You don't so have it, it, It's really good when you combo with it, right? So Bowmaster's hmm. Veal, Bowmaster's Windfall, like it's ridiculous in those decks. But in just like a deck that's not doing that, I don't like it because it doesn't further your game plan. So Notion Thief, uh, Opposition Agent, even like Narset, like... You're digging for cards that further your game plan or notion that you're actually just drawing cards. This just like puts out a body and does some damage. So I don't actually like it that much uh, in just a generic deck. But if you're going to play Windfalls, if you're playing Howling Minds, if you're playing Wheels, then yeah, this is like cracked. Uh, if you're a sack deck, this is really good, right? No. So I think you need to do stuff with it. But and I'm not totally sold card. on just staple throw in there oh. and... Huh, Our sixty card podcast. I don't know. You poo pooed this card. You <laughs> I don't, don't even think it's that good in modern. <laughs> I don't. You poo pooed it. Games has Krim destroyed oh, I got, I got us with special this. for you, Krim, for sixty card. I'll, I'll reveal it in a oh. <laughs> in a bit. I think oh, every single man. time we saw the Bowmaster, we were like, "This card's broken." It was, was never keeps wheeled. wheeling with it. Every no, time I don't wheel. wheel. No, I don't even have to wheel. What have I wheeled? He's like, remember he went balls, and we we needed a mana drain to save us or whatever. Like he always does that, which is insane yeah seth that's known insane. free counter spell lover and supporter decides to fierce guardianship me <laughs> but th <laughs> think of think of all the big like mass card draw we play though all the green card draw the two draw 10 cards draw. i remember what told me on this that's card what the you weekend played. it came out i was at a magic con or scg the weekend this released and i was i opened one threw it in my deck and i played against someone who played last march of the ends and drew like 18 and i flashed this yeah. in and like shot down all the stuff that they put into play with like last march of the ends and it was like 
so good. So I think that like Commander is all about drawing cards, right? Like people just draw cards in mass. So the fact that this can not only like hit your opponent's face, but shoot down creatures makes it like a really good removal spell and a, like just massive body. So I'm I'm all in on this card. I think this card people I draw in mass. Number two card of the year. Yeah. Yeah, people draw in mass so you can't amass. And that's uh, great. Very, so very like trip. yeah, like I I think this is number two as well. This is a probably a number two card for me. Mm. Okay. Seth, hit us with a card. Oh. Okay, so this year we got to see a lot of dinosaurs. This was like the year of the dinos. We saw Last Caverns of Ixalan, but Watsy had been sneaking them in even in earlier sets. And I would say the best dino of the year and maybe the strongest commander of the year, at least arguably, came back in March of the Machines this spring. Itali Primal Conquer, also Itali Primal Sickness. So the front side, seven mana, seven, seven trample when it ETBs. Uh, each player exiles cards from the top of their library until they hit a non-land. And you get to play all those cards for free. And then you can pay nine and a hybrid green Phyrexian, uh, so usually nine and two life, and you get to transform it into literal bright serial clauses. 11 11 trample indestructible, it deals combat damage, the player gets that many poison counters. This card is one of the wildest commander cards they've printed. Like, it comes down, you're playing commander, so you have three opponents. This for seven mana is going to give you four free cards. It can't even really whiff that hard because you're guaranteed to hit non-land, so it's not like uh, like a chaos warp, sometimes fizzles or whatever. And then, of course, you have all the blink shenanigans, anything like that to reuse its ability. It gets even crazier. And even if that stuff's not in your deck, your opponent's deck might have clone their blink effects that you hit to do it again. And then, once you get bored of the game, you just, like, spend your mana to flip it around and one shot someone with a plate steal. It is an absurd effect as a commander, and it's also just a ridiculous card in a 99. This is like, if Phil was here, I'm sure this would be high on Phil's That's list. This is just like such a value-y Phil style card. So if you like that style of magic, where you're just doing these like big, flashy, huge things, Italia is like the number one card of the year as far as that goes. Not the number one on power level, but wow, it is a ridiculously flashy, strong card. I think even on power level, I've seen this pop up so many times, and every single time, it basically wins the game. Like, yeah, you could get, like, somebody's Cultivate, but you're hitting everybody's everybody's library. So if it's a four-player game, that's four free cards when it ETBs. And you can't do that much about it. It can't whiff because it can't hit lanes or anything. And then, yeah, if you hit a Blink or if you hit a Clone, it just gets absurd i've seen it flip like maybe twice ever it doesn't really matter it's just that front side etb is so good and it's a huge creature itself it's just like oh my god this and it always wins the game like it's just always yeah. and if i've seen somebody i had a friend of mine in a in a play group he built an Italian deck he played it two times and he was arch enemy and he just like he took it apart because he was like it's just too good for my play group so whoops <laughs> like i'm not saying like oh don't build it like obviously but like if you're in a lower level play group just so you know this card is so strong in the command zone that yeah <laughs> huh. card is gas it's very good yeah. my only comment is the cheapest version is the showcase version <laughs> it's 16 dollars, okay and yep. then the normal version is 23 but why do you ask is the special <laughs> frame it's because the showcase version is a coin of Atali's head and then the <laughs> the normal version is actually a dinosaur and you're like did you did you pay seven mana to cast the coin or would you pay seven mana to cast a dinosaur <laughs> and people are willing to pay 50 percent more to cast the dinosaur <laughs> art than the coin so i just found that kind of funny that is kind uh, of this funny. Is i mean <laughs> you came to cast the dino not a a golden chicken nugget right like <laughs> exactly, i don't understand right? what, like why that doesn't want... bode well for uh the showcase frame for ixalan in general <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but this card, this card's insane. Uh, I I wish Wizards, Wizards wouldn't print these cards. It's so easy to abuse with the blinks. Uh, it's literally like how much free mana can you scoop off the top of everyone's library at like no risk or anything? It's like a real body. It's a seven mana seven seven trample. And if that's not enough, you can transform it and one shot someone. You're like, why did it need to be so overloaded? It could be a seven mana one one, and people would still play it without a backside. So I don't understand why it had to be so overloaded, but we're in the Elder Dinosaur meta here. So. <laughs> it's very exciting, though. I love it. <laughs> it is. It might be Timmy, too good, though. The I, I could see your friend's experience being like kind of common, where you throw it together thinking, oh, this is going to be a cool dinosaur thing, and then you just like absolutely stomp your play group, and after a few games, they're like, eh, you got to chill uh, with this. Stomp. Stomp the play group with dinosaurs. <laughs> All right. Uh, Tomer, hit us with the card. All right. 
Uh, I got one that uh, when I was starting to upgrade the, I, I do like an upgrade guide for all the precons every single time there's new precons, and there was Lord of the Rings. I was doing an upgrade guide, and I threw this card into each one of them. It was a brand new card, very budget friendly at the time. Raise the Palisade. Uh, it's a five mana blue sorcery, four and a blue, and it says choose a creature type, return all creatures that aren't of the chosen type to their owner's hands. Um, it was like under five bucks when I was talking about it. I tweeted about it that was really good. There was a spike, and then everybody was like, oh, Tomer's big hashtag MTG finance. Tomer's spiking cards using that influencer. <laughs> I'm like, no, I don't really <laughs> have that power. If a card is good, a card is good. And this card is just very good because uh, one-sided board wipes, I think, are one of the best things you can be doing in a game of Commander. Uh, if you're in like a creature heavy deck that's like focused on a certain creature type, you don't want to board wipe your own stuff. You don't want to set your own stuff back, but you also want to progress the board. Well, this cards like this that leave your board intact, but put all your opponents back into the Stone Age are very, very good. And this fits in every single creature deck that is in blue. So if you're in a zombie deck, you can put this in. You're in a, you're in a merfolk deck. You can put this in. You can put any type of creature deck. You can put this in, and it's going to do great work. It basically removes all blockers so you can have a free attack, and then you don't have to worry about being attacked back because your opponents are going to take an entire turn off to replay their board state, and then while you still have one. Um, it's it's I it, Basically, any uh, creature type deck, I just put it in, and it's always done serious work. That actually seems pretty good. I've never played this card, and I don't think I've... I don't wow. actually. Is this from the Commander precons? Like I, I don't yeah, even know the, if I remember the, the Simic one. Card the Simic. Yeah, the, it was in the Elf, elf. one, and then I just oh, put it in the really other good. one. It's, oh. it's, it's really good. good. It seems like it does a lot of what you want Cyclonic Rift to do, right? Like we always talk about the ability to make your opponents pick up your stuff and get in that like mythical Alpha strike because there's no blockers, like uh, that whole thing. Like this kind of does the same thing. But, oh no, <laughs> but Al Richard hates Richard this chicken, card. Chicken, that yeah, chicken, he's already that like so dude. bad. <laughs> But it was that, five I mean, mana. It's five here's what happens. It's a fog. It's, it's a what? fog. This, this is five mana. So it's not even instant speed. So it doesn't fog anything. But it's five mana. Preemptive become fog. arch enemy. <laughs> what? Right? And so you needed enough power to kill everyone. But like, and, but you need to remove their blockers, which usually isn't the case. I would rather just play Moonshaker Cavalry, Code of Arms, like literally anything, and try to actually alpha strike and end the uh. game. Rather than bounce everything back, everyone's like, oh. Tomer's arch enemy now. And they're like, don't worry. Let me snap off my Wrath of God. And then they kill all your creatures and they deploy all their creatures, get all their ETBs, get all their roaming throne triggers. I hate these mass bounce spells that are one-sided because they don't really end the game. They just make you arch enemy. Like, what if you don't have enough damage? What immediately. You... <laughs> everyone's like, ugh, Tomer's ahead. Very clear. Look at the board. He has stuff. No one else has anything. And you needed to kill everyone in that state, which you probably can't. Okay. Right, so you're gonna you're just just gonna die now because it's three v one and you you don't have any like recourse here, right? Of course, Richard doesn't like this card, right? If he doesn't like Cyclonic Rift, why would Richard like I this? Know, Cyclonic Rift is infinitely right? like, better than this because that's instant speed. I'm with <laughs> right? you, Tomer. I love this card. I think this card is a house. As someone who has a lot of kindred decks, I think this thing is amazing. It doesn't blow up my stuff. It tempo plays all your stuff back to your hand, gets me in for an attack. You you can you can do your board wipe. You can redeploy, do all that, whatever. But you're going to do that over... A, a, you got to choose one. Your next turn, you either border wiping me, which you probably will... Or you're redeploying, and if you're rede uh, like if you're redeploying, you're gonna take some time to rebuild. If you're board wiping, you're definitely taking Drawing another cards. You're getting triggered. Oh, please! <laughs> I, I mean, I, this card is a house. How do you not like also, this card? It's so good in a kindred deck. Moonshaker's it eight. will never see birds ever. If you ever get <laughs> my bird's nest, you know it's an imposter. Wow. And all the police switches <laughs> kidnapped. <Wow. laughs> Moonshaker's eight. This is five. And sometimes you have Moonshaker, but you don't have enough to kill the rest of the table. So what? You're gonna take out one person, but, be so, entirely like, vulnerable. Board the state where pack? you have like twenty twenties or something that have no evasion, <laughs> and you need raise the palisade to clear the way to like, hit it with your big blocker. You know, like. No, when I have what like does a, that happen? When I have a bunch of like three threes or something, like I have four creatures on the battlefield or something, and you have okay, so you 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 clear the board, deal twelve damage to one player, and yeah. then everyone's like, "Yo, Tomer just removed all of our stuff. Who's arch enemy here?" Well, what are they gonna do about? It? They have no board. Like, <laughs> I I actually have a question though. Like, 
Do, have you found these effects to get worse since everything has an ETB now? That's something I've been no. thinking about lately. Like, no. I don't know if I like making my opponent pick up their board. Think of the deck you see, like, well, let's go back to Phil again. Just, like, everyone's playing all these things at ETB. A lot of times it feels like, like, sure, I slowed them down for a turn, but I also give them the upside of letting them re-trigger all their ETB triggers again. I feel like Mass Bounce eh. is, like, getting worse and worse because there's just so many ETBs now. Everything has an ETB. No. I don't know. It's been no, bad, but, Seth. Uh, <laughs> the ETBs are, are, yes, a factor, but let's be honest here. The tempo play of, like, some... You're telling... I will give you the ETBs if you want to redeploy them if I'm playing my Fairies deck, if I'm playing my Rogues deck, right? This is perfect. This plays exactly into you, me making you redeploy everything, use your turn again. Whatever. You get your value, sure, but I've gotten my value... I've definitely gotten way, way farther ahead on board. Uh, I, I'm here with it. I'm here for this. Like, what? no. Okay, here's a scenario for like, for like Krim, <laughs> or you know, you said you have a bunch of creatures on the battlefield, and then you're mm -hmm. playing like one v one or something, and your opponent has nothing on the battlefield. They spent, they tap out, and they draw three cards. Do you not feel like freaking awesome at that point? <laughs> like you're like, yeah. Hell yeah. My Goro Goro and, and yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Satoru yeah, okay. and Goro Goro deck, it feels so good because then I can bounce all my non-tokens back. So I just name dragons or keep my dragon tokens on board, bounce all my own stuff back, and also I'm take advantage chess. of those ETBs that you just mentioned. I'm chess. Yeah, I mean, if you have some combo to read, like you're playing eggs or something, like, okay, yeah, right. <laughs> okay, well, I don't, I don't know. What, I, don't, I don't know, man. Like, this is an instant become arch enemy without helping you close the game. Right, what? This, uh, like, this like, helps you close the game. It, it removes enemy. blockers. But, like, that means you have big enough creatures to actually kill people through this one step. Because instantly, it's massive tempo loss because you're not just a player at the table. You are now arch enemy. And you're playing three people's worth of mana and cards against you because you're massively ahead. And it's so much worse because if someone has a board wipe, you like reverse unoed yourself, right? Like everyone saved all their creature and board wiped you, right? So like if someone board wipes you after this, this is so bad, right? So Always worst I, case scenarios over here. I, yeah, okay. I play all these creature decks. And I will never, ever play Fine. these cards. Ever. Fine. Sorry. Ever. Let's know if the if that is section. your worst case scenario, I will take the one in 100 times that happens and yeah. and fall somewhere short of that and be like very Like, how many times happy. have you won by casting this? Like, you need you the pump. So no? I've won so many so times. You had times. enough damage to kill people, but blockers were no, was what was stopping you? It's not all people. Like, let's say, like, somebody's head on board. You could bounce an entire table. You can, you can kill. You could throw your entire army to kill that one person and the other two have to redeploy. You don't have to worry about, oh, I'm going to die on the crackback. That's the beauty of yes. this card. It seems weak to changelings, though. I'm just saying. I know. Well, everything's weak <laughs> to changelings. Yeah, I mean, that's just the greatest deck of all, all right. time. Uh, wait, where, where were we? Where were... Oh, no. Okay. Oh, oh, you guys are going to love this one. Okay, I, I am dead serious. Okay, oh, <laughs> Number one card of the year. I think it's better than the One Ring. I'm not even Ooh. joking. Ooh. Is Open the Way. Okay? Open the Way. Uh, we actually discovered on a podcast, like, really recently, uh, X, green, green, source, whiplash, X, can't be greater left than body. the number of players in the game, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal X cards, put those lands onto the battlefield tapped, the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So they can be non-basics. Uh, for three mana, you get one land. For four mana, you get two lands. That's the uh, explosive vegetation. For uh, five mana, you get three lands. And for six mana, you get four four lands if someone casts this for five or six i've already lost the game <laughs> like, <laughs> like when i see someone do that they're like look they could have gotten any number of utility lands any number of like field of the deads any number of two mana lands like imagine you hit ancient tomb uh temple off this you like just literally ramp six mana uh and like you can't touch it you, we can't touch lands in commander there's no coming back from this this is one of those like you win the game without being obvious like, once someone plays a one ring, they're like, oh, my God, kill the one ring player. <laughs> this one's like, oh, my God, he's ramped so hard, but yeah. I can't do anything because we can't Armageddon him and we can't really do it. So, <laughs> yeah, OK, move on. Right. So this is one of those sneaky cards and it's never dead. Right. There's these like six or seven mana ramp spells that will ramp like basically your whole deck out. But if you have them at three mana, you're stuck. This one can be used to ramp a, a land out at that point. So the flexibility uh the the default explosive vegetation mode way better you don't need to run basics uh this this card God. is insane every green deck starts with this to with me above nature's lore far seek any of those this is like the number one green card wow that's high I, praise. I, I, 
I, I will say that, okay, whatever whatever you're drinking, Richard, whatever juice you're on, I need a, a just a, a to be a, a hint of that. Because you went from, first off, you, you Rift is poo-poo. Palisades poo-poo <laughs> better than the one ring is is Open the Ways. I like Open the Ways. Sponsored by Cheese Fuel. It doesn't get you instantly killed. At least not yet, because people don't understand it. But when it should have instantly get you killed. I mean, what? Open the Ways. Better than the one ring, right? I just want to I just no. want to say that again. The one ring gets again. you instantly killed, right? Like everyone automatically <laughs> becomes arch enemy with you and you got to win that. And that's But you difficult. can go blow for blow with the table with the one ring. <laughs> like like that's Only if you open the way first cuz you don't have the mana to utilize all uh... the cards you need, <laughs> right? I I don't know about this better than the one ring thing, but yeah, I do agree that this good. is like the best is at least the best four mana ram spell. Like if you're playing explosive vegetations, migrations fast, like I'm fully convinced of that. It's hard for me to compare to like the nature's lore effects. They seem like they do different jobs for me, but like this is, I think, the the new best, uh the new best four mana ram spell. So flexible. You don't have to play basic lands, which is huge for someone like me that just doesn't believe in playing a ton of basics. And you get utility lands out of it, which is also really nice. You can't control it, so it's not quite as good at like fixing your mana i guess but this card is this is like still a sleeper i'm shocked every time i look on edh rackets and like two percent of decks i'm like why don't people play this card the way like people are playing 10 percent of people playing migrations path or whatever why are they not why have they not realized that this is just better it's still like a dollar too it's like not expensive even so i, I like think this is a card people are going to figure out at some point i really like this card but i definitely don't think it's like better than nature's or something it, it serves a different purpose like you cast it for four mana or five mana uh, not cast two mana. <laughs> cast it for three. Yeah, you it's can like cast three. Hurts. <laughs> you can cast it for three. It's not, not. Yeah, that's fine. But yeah, I think it's really good. Just no way better than the one. So ring. if you cast it for three and hit a bounce land, that's the same as Kodama's reach. Sure. Right. Until I strip mine your bounce land. Sure. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> and, and you also can't get Oppo Agent. So uh, all the green ramp is weak to opposition agent. This does not uh, have that weakness. And yeah. remember, it's. It's, 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 is it better with MDFCs? It skips all the MDFCs. <laughs> yeah, it skips them. But like, like there, there is a world where you get like Temple of the False God, Ancient Tomb, two bounce lands. That's like draw to ramp six mana, right? Like that's disgusting for six mana. There's a world where you get uh, Field of the Dead, three other lands. That's four zombies coming down with you, right? So there are so many things you can do with this that it is insane. And it's 70 cents. That's wrong. And uh, people will realize how strong this is. And the best thing is no one... It's like when people didn't understand how good the one ring was, right? Like, yeah, whatever, leave them alone. <laughs> they leave you alone. They don't gang up on you and murder you instantly for opening the way. So uh, maybe I should keep this as my secret because I don't want to die now when I cast <laughs> open the way for six. <laughs> but you should. You should literally kill me. As soon as you see that, you're like, oh, that's like infinite man. That's like a Zendikar resurgent happening that you can't interact with, right? Like that's like kind of scary, right? That's a Mirari's wake that you can't interact with. That's extremely, extremely scary. It depends what you hit. Like if you hit a couple basics, I'm like, okay, what? Well, th don't play 18. Yeah, who plays basics? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> We're trying to role models for, this, for the community. Come on. <laughs> All, right. All right. Crib, hit us with the card. I mean... This is has been my my number one card uh, in all my decks. I'm not gonna be out here and tell you that it's better than the One Ring because I you know I'm I'm realistic here, but <laughs> but but like I will say this is one of the best. I I think it's probably the best top end like bomb that we've had this year, especially for Black. Uh, I think Breach the Multiverse. Uh, for those that don't know, Breach of the Multiverse, dude. This set, I'll say it again. I think that uh, this set was just loaded with a bunch, a bunch of uh, 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 like just haymakers and like commander all stars. But Breach the Multiverse is from March of the Machine. Uh, it's it's five black black sorcery. Each player mills ten. You, you, you heard mill? I know. I'm already happy. Uh, for each player, choose a creature or planeswalker card in that player's graveyard. And now remember, it does not. You can get anything in there in that yard. It doesn't have to be from the milled cards. And then put those cards onto the battlefield under your control. Then each creature you control becomes a Phyrexian in addition to its other types. You know, if you have a Roaming Throne, you got to get a little, a little fancy <laughs> name Phyrexian there too. But uh, but this has been an all-star. I feel like, yeah, it's a little bit of random. It's a little, but like, I think that's the fun in it. Like this card, I think is, 
It's flashy. It's fun. It says mill. It bothers people enough just to where it brings a smile to my face. And so I think it taking the best cards from your graveyards, my graveyard as well. I think this card is just so sweet. And normally this is like a spell. If this were printed like a few years back, this would be nine, 10 mana, but this is seven mana. Uh, and, and this is a, a way more aggressively costed spell in a multiplayer game. This is chef's kiss. This is commander to me. This card has been 2023 commander fun. Uh, it captures everything I love about commander. Breach reminds me of like fair Itali. It's like Itali, but yeah. it's harder to loop because it's like a spell you got to get back from your graveyard. But like the amount of value it gives you for seven mana is kind of absurd, right? You're getting like the four best creatures from your opponent's graveyard or maybe or a planeswalker. planeswalker. Yeah, 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 yeah. There might be a planeswalker. Also, too, but like, with yeah, dozens of us. At, at, don't forget to add Glimpse the Unthinkable is also attached to this card. Yeah, yeah. sure. Krim loves well, to kill I mean, people. Yes, I mean the mill supports the reanimation, right? Like you, it helps fill the graveyard, so you have more options. I don't know about, about like how much the milling ten matters as far as like actually milling someone out with it in most decks, but no, still, like you don't play sword of body. You mill forty oh. card. You mill forty. I was trying to defend you in your pick, Krim, and then you brought up sword of body in mine. <laughs> you you mill forty cards and get the four best creatures or planeswalkers. Like that by itself is a really powerful effect, and it's a fun effect. So I like this card yeah. too. It, and it gets it from again your your graveyard as well, and from the anything that's in the yard, not just from the mill ten. I think it's comparable to like Itali. Itali has like more repeat value, and but but this has uh, more select better selection. I would say like you usually want to be getting creatures off this uh, off like an Itali as well too. Uh, but now you get to choose whatever you mill, but also whatever was already in the graveyard too. Um, you're getting four bodies from it. It's very good. I've I've seen it casted many times and reached the multiverse every single time I saw a class was was like basically a game winner or close to it or like threatening to win the game. And that's what I want from a seven mana spell, you know? That's exactly what I want from my top end. I, I think there was one time I played this card at one of the Magic Cons and I played a game. It was me and three others. One of the others was my mod. And I think it was like I got two really good cards. And OK, this is like the one bad time. And I got like Monastery Swift Spear. <laughs> oh, <ouch. laughs> so that was like a bad. But like, I think it's fun. It's fun. So what, what do you think is better? So Itali, it's just whatever's on top. It could be spells as well. Itali comes yeah. with a body that turns into Blight Steel or Breach, which gives you the selection. Because you could also breach and then choose the Atali versus the mana dork on some, you know, the top of someone's deck, right? So, mm -hmm. like, what, what do you actually think is better between the two? Ooh. I like card selection. And, I like, the randomness of it is, is of Atali. I'm not going to say Atali is a bad card. But I am going to say that the randomness of it isn't, like, ideal for me and my play style. So, I really like card selection. Uh, although the nice part is Atali is a body on top of that can that can kill you <laughs> next turn. <laughs> I mean, That's Breach mm. Breach is great, but like Atali's busted. Like uh, the, the, I think the thing that Atali has on it is it's just so easy to clone it, loop it, blink. Like this is often one shot. There are cards you can hit an Arcane Man and get back and again. cast it for seven mana again. Like Atali though does that for free a lot of times. You Atali hit a clone, get another Atali. Next thing you know, you just have this huge board. So I think like. I think Itali is the more powerful of two, but Breach is very good as well. I think, but I feel like mm. Itali, like there's a chance that you don't win the game on the spot, right? Yeah, there you are got a monastery Swift where... spear. There's situations I mean, where you think you're a monastery <laughs> Swift spear. God, the lows can be low, but let me tell you, the highs are unreal on this, right? Yeah. the The ceiling on this, I think, is much higher. Although the consistency of Itali just being there is is an appeal right so there's the consistency of itali but there's the ceilings and the wild moments that can happen with breach i think itali is stronger but you really need to have blinks and clones otherwise if it's just like you're casting one of these two they're both in your 99 and you're casting just one of these and you have no follow-up with any of them i think breach is going to be a little bit better just because of the card selection and you get four bodies they need the best uh, of them but itali i mean it comes with body it's a dinosaur and dinosaurs are basically Dragons without wings, so they're already very sweet. Um, the dino and then community if you're gonna be upset with you. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they're, I'd say they're second best. They're second best out there. Yeah, exactly. Then, <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> dragons are better. I'm a dragon gang. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then if you have blinks and clones, and Natalia's better. But yeah, 
I think it's Holly and it's not even close because uh-huh. like, if, if everyone's deck is hot trash, you still have a 7-7 seven, seven that flips into a Blight Steel. There are a lot of decks with weak creatures but very strong spells. Think Phil. Uh, and then on top of the blink synergies and things like that, like imagine you sat down playing against three Richard decks and you're like, oh, I get Spirited <laughs> Companion, uh, this 1-1 so one, one bird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is hot garbage. Yeah. But Atali doesn't get around that. It's, it's, no, it's you have a 7-7. Seven, seven. <laughs> you have a 7-7 seven, seven oh, trample at the minimum. <laughs> you could get like my secret rendezvous or something. You could get like an actual spell that matters. So, like, you also get, like, I think like, Atali Richard, that. Again, that is like the worst yeah. case scenario. Right, like the absolute worst yeah, yeah. case scenario, right? Yeah, but I, mean, I think they're both very good. But I, I think if I could choose one, so Atali's restricted by color. Close. It's a gruel card, right? But uh, I think Atali's th- that body is like no joke. That's a real body. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Seth, hit us with a card. Possibly yeah. the number one card. I mean, this. <laughs> I don't even think we got to talk about this one. This one. This one's super easy. Uh, going back to Lord of the Rings: Tales of Middle Earth with the One Ring itself. Uh, you probably know what it does, but four man indestructible artifact ETBs. You get protection from everything for a turn. Being your upkeep, you lose a life for each burn counter on it. You tap it and put a burn counter on it and draw cards equal to the burn counters on it. Uh, we've done a whole podcast about this, about whether we should ban it on Commander Clash. It's been a huge topic this year. I think in Commander, power level wise, this is the card of the year for me. It's colorless. You can put it in any deck. We have seen it just be an absurd card advantage engine, like the, I don't even know, like Necro of 2023, except it's colorless almost, like the amount of cards that this can draw. We've had games where it is, the protection is looping, and that's someone's game plan where they're like bouncing this, cloning this to stay alive forever. And that's not even uh, considering the real world impact of this. Like this was a card that, was bought by Post Malone for $2 million. Like, this was the most hyped card. There were so many news articles in mainstream sites. So I think overall, for me, the One Ring is the card of the year, not just for Commander, but, like, for Magic. So Commander gameplay and also just real-world impact, It's it's got to be the One Ring, right? Like, is there even an argument against that? I don't think it's even particularly close. We've talked a lot about a lot of really good cards today, but 2023, when you look back on it, like, 20 years from now, the One Ring is going to be the card that you remember. It's... Argument is you can play it wrong and kill yourself. Oh. So, so the way not to play this is turn four, one ring, right? Because uh, you get protection yes. on an irrelevant turn. And you're like, oh, I need to hit my fifth land drop. So I got to start drawing cards with the one ring, right? But everyone's like, well, actually, you're going to spiral like out of control in like two or three turns. And you don't have the mana to back up your cards, right? So you can draw all the cards you want, but you're on like five mana. You can't 3v1 effectively. Uh, so it is very strong, but you can play it wrong. So it, it's better if you turn one, two, three, four, ramp, ramp, ramp. And then on turn eight, someone's about to lethal you. You chuck this down, gain protection. Now you draw all the cards, but you also have all the mana to deploy all the cards and dispatch everyone like 3v1. So very strong, but I know a lot of people play it wrong, I think. We're under 50% win rate on Clash, you know? Like, the, mm-hmm. when we play this, like, the person usually we'll dies before they can actually win. Like, the timing has to be, like, perfect because it's so powerful. Everyone makes you arch enemy. So you got to time it just right so that you can actually 3v1 and take everyone down. Uh, but if you loop it, then who cares, right? Just keep looping it. <laughs> if you can loop it, you can loop it from turn four, by all means, go ahead. I feel like that's a little bit like the, remember the argument that used to be like, oh, Soul Ring's not good because you don't actually have that high of a win percentage when you play Soul Ring on turn one. But that's because Soul Ring's so good that everyone just teams up and murders you when you lose. Like, isn't that, that mean it's bad like, though? Is no. that a mark against a card that it's like so incredibly powerful? You immediately arch enemy the table if you play it. Yes, it's hard for me what's to like real world in- win rate. What is real world win rate, right? So like <laughs> you actually have to win more when you play it. And if it's so powerful or perceived to be so powerful that you always die, then that's a bad card, right? Even though objectively it's very good, you're just getting murdered all the time, right? Yeah. I think it also, mm-hmm. it also right. depends if if everybody's doing powerful things. Like you don't want to be the person who's like. Oh, I'm avoiding all these powerful cards because I might be served the Arch Enemy, but then all everybody else is doing it because then, like, you're just behind at that point. I don't know. I Like, the last time I played the One Ring, I have it in my Selenia deck, and I've cast it on turn two. I did turn turn two, Dark Ritual, <laughs> One Ring. I won that game. It was very fun. But, like, yeah, I, I could see you could play it in bad times, too. But I've also seen, like, in Commander Clash, how many times have we seen where, like, I was going to kill, like, Richard one time when we were playing Nephilim, and he just plays the one ring. He didn't, like, do anything busted with it, really, but he got 
a full fog for his turn. And I couldn't kill him, so I had to kill somebody else. So he survived. I don't think I don't know if he won that game, but I, he definitely didn't lose first. Um, so that helped. And then just like yeah, it's never been a bad card. It's always been over performer. I, I do agree that Richard with Richard that like you could play badly. Like you could play at times where it, it might be too much uh, threat. But I feel like this is when the one card, one card that we could talk about with all of these cards that you could actually play it and you can be the arch enemy and it could still win you the game because it is that strong. Like when you're drawing that yeah. many cards, you could probably still 3v1 the table, you know? I, I, I did it one time and it's been my, my uh, MO since then. Apparently I just... Uh, clone and loop one rings every 30 seconds. Yeah, you monster. Um, it's like a Kiki but, combo. But, you're always the one. Yeah, player. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but just doing it that one time scarred Richard so much that I feel like he probably wakes up in a cold sweat at 3 a.m. <laughs> but I, I, I'm ready for it. <laughs> yeah, like he's like he's always ready for it. Like, Yo, Krim, he's gonna try to loop that ring, dude. I'm like, dude, I did it one time, man. I swear. <laughs> like, but the card is so good, and and the reason why I reference that is because just passively. It's not hard to loop the one ring. <laughs> it really isn't. If you play it in like a certain color, you can clone it, you can bounce it. There's a lot you can do. And it's such a powerful effect that I I, I love this card. Uh, it will get you killed. And and if you play this card, do not be surprised that it gets you killed. Like there, there is no point in you politicking. You just turn your mic off. You mute yourself. You don't <laughs> talk for the rest of the game. You're playing so PVE. It's solo player mode. Now you gotta you gotta beat the other three. <laughs> it's that simple. And, and and Seth mentioned cultural phenomena post Malone. You know all the yeah. all the yeah. Wall Street articles and everything. The most important thing is it's brought about the fog meta. <laughs> the protection That's is so not strong real. and that you need to be ready for this and that it just fogs everyone. That's a fog on a stick, everyone. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like, fog meta. <laughs> if Cryptic fog drew me play cards and fogged, it's so good. Wow. We've all been played all right, first. last card all been in the wrap, wrap it up. <laughs> okay, so one ring I would say is my top choice, but there's another card that I've been running into in most of my white deck so I, I think it's definitely worthy contender to talk about for best cards of 2023 and that is clever concealment this is a four mana white instant and it has convoke and convoke your creatures can help cast a spell each creature you tap while casting the spell pays for one or one mana of that creature's color so if you have like two white creatures and two whatever other colored creatures uh you can tap those and cast a spell for zero mana instead of four or anywhere in between two and then any number of target non-land permanents you control phase out. Um, so we all love Teferi's protection. I feel like it's pretty I safe don't. to say you don't like Teferi's. I, I'm tired of Teferi's protection, but I still run it. <laughs> I, th I think we all run it in white. I think this is like the second second protection spell you would put in your white decks after Teferi's protection, which is like very high praise. Um, this saves not only your creatures, but it also saves all your non-land permanents, uh, something that Flawless Maneuver cannot do for free. Uh, this one can. Um, if you have creature, if you're just like a creature deck or you have just uh, some amount of creatures, you could be like an Enchantress deck that happens to poop out creatures or whatever. Uh, you could still use this very, very well. Uh, it saves you against also Exile effects too, like Farewell, which like Flawless Maneuver cannot do or similar indestructible abilities cannot do. It doesn't save you from out of strikes though. It's not quite to fairies protection, but there's something to be said about you could be tapped out and you could still have this ready to go. To fairies protection, still three mana. This one can be zero mana. And that means it's super reliable. And yeah, it just saves you from basically any type of board wipe, guaranteed. So I mean, yeah. I don't I don't think of this card is doing the same thing as Teferi's protection, but I think this card is the best like unbreakable formation, flawless maneuver. Like if you go into that tier of like I want to save my board from stuff, this is just the best of that effect now, right? We've seen more of the phasing out effects and we need these phasing out effects. We've been talking all year about farewells in Commander Clash and Sunfalls, these wraths that just exile. And because of phasing out, this is a way that you can actually not just save your creatures, but all of your non-lane permanents for something like that. So uh, I don't see it as Teferi's protection competition, but I do think this is like an ultra staple for decks that are playing a bunch of creatures in white. I do think you want to be able to convoke it and do the trick you were talking about of like, I can be tapped out and still cast this. Uh, so if you're not playing a reasonable number of creatures, I might not be interested. Otherwise, like I would play this in every white deck every single time. 
Also, shout out to Gladriel's Dismissal. I think that was the Lord of the Rings mm, Holiday so Edition one. That that's like for one mana, it <laughs> phases out a, a, a creature. Mm -hmm. And if you mm -hmm. kick it for four total mana, you phase out all of target player's creatures. So we've seen that's the other one this year that I really like. So I'm kind of like off the flawless maneuver plan in Unbreakable Formations. Like, I don't care. Indestructible, I don't want that anymore. It's not good enough. I want these phase out <laughs> effects instead to protect my team. Yeah. This card is really good, but like Alish Norn, it has suffered from phase out creep. Uh, <laughs> so we have a, like we have a bunch of these protection spells. So uh, everybody lives from Doctor Who is another one of these kind of mass protection thingies. Galadriel's dismissal, I think I rank above Clever Concealment because Ooh. it can be used for one mana to save a creature that you own, but True. it's also protection against dying to combat right so for one mana you can phase out someone attacking oh, you or for four mana fog. you can phase out their team it's fog. oh god no right it's it's yeah, it's a it's pseudo a swords the plowshares interaction phase out etherize something but you can use it on your team as well uh and then you have the ability to do it for one mana so there's a lot of these cards now right and then also like stuff like uh robe of stars I don't think that's this year, right? But like, that there's a lot of phase out things though. for mm -hmm. like Voltron decks, uh, because when you phase out your commander, like all the equipment phase out with it. Uh, so there are so many phase out cards. I think we need a tier list on this. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, this is one of those things where clever consumer really good, but Wizards keeps printing these, and now it's like, how many of these effects can you actually run, and which ones do you slot into your deck? I I mean, only if we can call that podcast. It maybe it was a phase. You know, like, <laughs> as long as we can call it that. But but I I don't think are are we just like kind of like disregarding the the convoke part? Because like no, I mean, Tom said it's free. It can be right, free. right. I know we talked about it, but I mean, but maybe you know, have we read it again? Like how that works? <laughs> like, it's, read, read the it's card free. Again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We should read the card again with yeah. with enough creatures. It's free. With yeah, four creatures. It's yes. Free. Yes. That's not a usually a deck that uses this kind of card will have four creatures, right? Like you've played against my humans deck, and it's just layers upon layers upon layers of protection. There's probably more protection there is humans. Um, so uh, but the point here is that I was able like this this card, if it's ever like free, it's absurd. But just paying two mana alone or any reduction at all is already nuts. But and its best case scenario is not that hard to achieve. And I think that, you know, yes, Galadriel's Dismissal is very good. It is always going to cost mana. It is always going to cost some amount of mana. Whereas Clever Concealment is going to be free. And it happens more often than not. And I thought we don't like free spells because it's too powerful. And if that's any if any of that is true... But right. you're paying mana to save yourself. So March of Swirling Mist is another option in blue. Yeah, that you March can is target good. other people's stuff. So if you're trying to use it as a pseudo... So one of the upsides of Teferi's Pro is it saves your bacon when you're getting sure, attacked sure. for lethal, right? But so I mean, Galadriel's compare Dismissal to that. costs mana, same with Marcus Rolling Mist, but it allows you to save yourself or allows you to like phase out someone's combo if they're a creature-based combo or something like that, right? So yes, it's more mana, but it does slightly different things. I mean, Teferi's mm. Pro is three mana and no one's going to say Clever Concealment's better Again, than Teferi's Pro if you get cast for free, it right? At this point, any comparison, unless they literally print something that, yeah. like, p saves your bacon, we are never comparing anything to Teferi's Pro, right? So the next best... Galadriel's pick, Dismissal. You phase on all the that's, attackers. That's not, that's <laughs> I don't know. If, if I'm, like, in a creature-heavy deck, if I'm not if I'm not draw-go, like, holding up four mana is a big ask. And, like, yeah, Teferi's Protection also is kind of a big ask, but that's three mana. Three, even in this between three and four is still pretty large, especially if you're not draw-go. Yeah. Uh, like holding up one mana, that's why I like like one mana interaction so much more than like two mana interaction if I'm tap out like style play. Four mana is just too much for me personally. So I really like Club March Concealment because you can be tapped out. March is really good though because March does allow you to be defensive and offensive as a way to phase out a blocker as well. And it in a way has pseudo like cost reduction. Of course, it does eat up a chunk of cards and is a lot more mana than Clever Concealment. So I think that because of that, I, I still think Clever Concealment is probably a master class, I would say, like, in this kind of spell. I think this is a very good card. And I think it just narrowly beats out March of Swirling Mists. And I love March of Swirling Mists. All right. Those are our top cards in 2023. Did we miss any? There were, there's some honorable mentions, so like Agatha's Soul Cauldron, Tribute to the World Tree, 
There's a lot of good cars. City Leveler. City oh, Tape. Uh, Leveler. <laughs> Leveler. <laughs> yeah, whatever <laughs> crew mentioned, yes. Uh, so let us know. Oh, wait, that's not this live. year. <laughs> Black Lotus, Tarmogoy. Black Lotus, yeah, Tarmogoy. Yes, yes. <laughs> let us know if we missed anything uh, on our list. Let us know if you think any of these cards are overrated, should not actually be here. We only uh, have missed curious. a lot, like a whole year. Yeah. Uh, a lot of Lord of the Rings here. A lot of Phyrexia cards. We didn't have any yeah. Wilds of Eldraine cards here. Doctor Who, notably missing. Uh, yeah. We didn't even talk about Galta. Galta, big new big Galta. That's great. So a lot of cool cards this year. Uh, so yeah, let us know in the comments. And then we'll see you all back here next year. I don't know if it's going up in January 1st or... <laughs> we'll see you back next week. <laughs> so.